Hi, my name is Dave Poland. I want to welcome you to Portland Film Beat. Tonight, my guest is Chris Buchel. Chris, welcome aboard. How are you doing? Pretty good. I'm glad you're here. Let's get right in on this, okay? Right. Where did you train? Um, I'm just self-taught. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, but you've had help from some friends in the area. Who's that? Oh, I work with a lot of really talented people. Uh, some of my best friends are a lot of really talented cameramen like Nathan Coltrane or Paul Escontievis, Harrison Howes. Uh, Sean Brown. Uh, okay, wow, yeah, great. A ton huh? of talented cats. Right, so what first got you interested in filmmaking? Um, I graduated from University of Oregon with what I like to call a bullshit degree. That's an English degree. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, I got done with school and I got this job off Craigslist. Um, you know, the food, to work in a restaurant, there's a food handling license. Okay. So in order to legally be able to work in a restaurant, you have to take this uh, food handler's exam. And I got a job writing test questions and designing the courseware for that. And part of it involved video work, and that's kind of how I fell into it. Wow, that's great. You've worked with a, another guest I had on here before named Brian Hilton, right? You yeah, know, Brian's him? a friend of mine, yeah. That's great. No, no. Um, do you do the cinematography yourself, or do you usually have someone else do that? Um, everything just depends on the project. Generally, though, I like to have someone else hold the camera so I can worry about the 50 other things that go into making exactly. a movie. That said, how do you work with a cinematographer? Do you work with a cinematographer? Do you let them do their job and then kind of come over and tweak it after? Um, again, it, it really depends on the project, but generally speaking, you know, you approach them and you tell them where you want to put the camera and then they light it for you or, you know, you light it or whatever right. you have to do on an indie film set. Uh, generally, I like to talk to them about it beforehand until we're done talking about it because at that point we know kind of what we're there to get and it's just a matter of going out and going through the meticulous step-by-step uh, -step process of getting the footage that you need that day. Wow, it sounds great. You've worked with a lot of different actors. Sure. How do you work with the actors? Do you let them take it on themselves and then tweak them? There's different ways, different actors, different directors work with actors differently. differently. Um, yeah, that's true. I, one thing I do is actually, before I go to bed every night, I go to sleep to a different interview with a different director, or like I listen to Inside the Actor's Studio, or whatever it is, every night I have a different lesson. Okay, good. In a sense, and I... You You're know, on a constant learning path then, that's also awesome. I really respect that, because I think we all are. Yeah, um, and so with actors, you know, I, I've had really difficult ones that, you know, I don't know <laughs> why we're in a room together staring at each other if we're not getting along and I've had really pleasant ones and I think no matter what whoever you're with you should just be their fan I mean ultimately you're there to watch them right you no know, I've so, never heard that before but I like that be their fan yeah well that's great uh, one of my heroes Paul Thomas Anderson said that and I think that's a really good lesson is that if they know that you're their fan and you're there to see them be successful it's it's a lot more likely that you'll have a pleasant day working with them that is awesome. How many films, short films, commercial things have you actually done? I have no idea. That many, huh? I started this about three years ago. And well, I've that's good. No, I'm glad. That makes since. you smile. Yeah. Uh -huh, yeah, that's really cool. great. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I just, I have no idea. Wow. Right now, what we're going to do is we're going to cut away. We're going to watch three of his trailers. The first one is called Bacon, and uh, I really like this. So we'll be right back. Some people eat bacon, but not all taste the truth. Legend says she was born with one eye, always looking for the perfect piece. Her hands so quick they were permanently greased. Her lips red, grinning, legend said. No pig safe, no meal complete. A mythical woman's touch to this tasty treat. Her love so pure, weaving each strand piece by piece. Fingertips so gentle, in preparing so delicate a feast. A bacon explosion, an explosion of flavor. The flick of an oven top, pop, crackle, pop. The slight sizzle, crumble of meaty morsels. Her hands mold the meat like a boxer molds his fist. Each pound releasing, taste, love, a cocktail of emotions all mixed. The grease flies up. Flavoring the sausage like a Jackson Pollock. Some say that a bite would make you see God, and a swallow would guarantee cardiac arrest. Gone is presumption, dried up is ego. 
Only the glory which lies before all men who taste the truth. A bacon explosion. She watches you eat. A woman whose sole purpose in life you've witnessed in the span of a single bite. That was really awesome, but now I'm kind of on the hungry side, Chris. <laughs> you did this as a competition for a commercial, is that right? Uh, yeah, I made it with my uh, friend Harrison in uh, my kitchen, and um, it was an attempt to win some money, yeah. Well, good for you. Or maybe get to make commercials? It's a, a commercial. That's what I thought when I saw it. It was a, commercial, a competition so that you can win the rights to make a commercial. Oh, no, no. I just made, um, made it as a standalone short and sold it to him. It was really good. Mm -hmm. It was really well done. I, I noticed that you did one thing in that. You worked a lot in extreme close-ups. Yeah. Was that specific to this one project, or do you work a lot in close, extreme close-ups? Um, well, I wear contacts, and oh. <laughs> I, I'm pretty much blind, so the way I see the world is kind of like this, you know, and so like where you're at, and really, I couldn't see you if I didn't have my contacts in, so okay. that's why I like close-ups so much. Okay, I think there's more to it than that, but I'll take that as an answer. Okay. I mean, there's also, <laughs> you know, it's my favorite lens because it's the lens right. I see the world when I don't wear contacts. Was that a, a 35? No, no, it's a macro. Was it a macro? Okay, yeah. just checking. And a lot of, uh, one of my heroes also uses macros a lot. I just like macros. Who's the hero that likes to use macros? Like? I like Darren Aronofsky quite a bit. Okay, um, yep, I've heard his name before. Yeah, stuff he does with sound and close-ups is right. always really interesting. What camera did you use? For that For the bacon piece? one, yeah. That was shot on a 5D. Was it? Mark just II. a Canon 5D Mark II? Okay. Yeah. What gave you the idea for the script? You wrote the script, I take it, right? Yeah. Um, since well, there's not any dialogue, it was just a lot of action steps in it? Well, it's it was uh, poetic in verse, and the reason being that, because I was trying to sell it to make money, you have to have a character that the piece is central to. And, and right, the, the girl in it. Yeah, and so and that... What actor was that, if you don't mind me asking? Um, that Actress. was my friend Emma Paulette. She's also Miss Oregon right now, which is pretty cool. Way to is go, that Emma. right? Yeah. Wow, and, that's uh, cool. Yeah, um, so you had, you know, the idea was to make the mystery of the the bacon cooking woman, you know, and <laughs> the mystery is what would keep them watching and keep them interested. That was really nice, though. Um, who was the cinematographer on that? And did you have any crew, or was it a really short? It was short? just me and uh, Harrison and Emma in my kitchen. Is that right? Yeah. Wow, but you did a great job with that. Did you edit it? No, my, my buddy John Meyer edited that one for me and, and did a great job with the sound design as well. Yeah, there was a lot of edit work in that because it was a lot of quick cuts. Yeah, what I like to do if I'm not editing it myself is I like to look in the camera and be like, hey, John, you know, here's the notes for this section, and I'll tell him ahead of time so that way when he's watching the clip, he'll be like, you know, okay. he'll know yeah. where to do mm -hmm. it. Good, good. Uh, right now, we're going to cut away to the second uh, tra trailer, and it's called The Funny Thing. And we'll be right back after this. The thing is, remember when you were a kid? Remember when whatever you did mattered when you were a kid? Where you bang a lid and run around all day with your friends chasing you? There was so much time to play. Things were funny then. Time moved slow. Remember waiting for the bus? The morning was such, a, was such fuss. a fuss. Remember going to the pencil sharpener where each turn your mind would wander. Remember, Remember the first time you took your step? <laughs> Me either, I can't remember that. Yet, I remember a time when time moves slow. Such a funny thing as you grow how time suddenly starts to move quite fast and then being a kid's the past. The past. Remember asking your parents crazy questions? They think, try to move you in the right direction when you had juice boxes. Uh, and learn about, and learn about dogs, dogs chasing, dogs, boxes, chasing boxes, running, boxes, shouting, running, not shouting, caring, not caring, having fun. Having fun. Are those times done? I'm growing up. My feet are farther away. And so are my days of play. And as my body reaches its peak, Puberty hits, sweat, sweat starts to stink. I've reached that brink of what is, is not adult. You consult your friends, your family, and all of your peers. They don't know the end of your years. They don't know what happens next. They, they don't, don't know, know what to expect. Do you remember 
what your mother used to say to you at night, pull your covers tight, right before she turned off the light. Oh, and that kid that had an accident. Everyone knew the smell was omnipresent. And do you remember that time so long ago where you were a kid and first saw snow? How white it was, so frosty and nice. There's no man may freeze overnight. <laughs> the cries of joy, there's noble fight. And the funny thing is, time marches on. The end is the beginning until the time is wrong. But the funny, the thing, funny is, thing is, the funny thing is always, is always around, around you. you. And the funny thing is, it will always astound you. You remember it all. Every moment described of your childhood passing before your eyes. But the funny thing is, you never knew it then. And the funny thing is, you can't stop it, my friend. That was, that was funny. I enjoyed it. To me, it seemed like a, a poetic monologue, I guess. Mm -hmm. I, you, tell, you tell me, what was the premise for that? I was 19 uh, in a class, really bored, and I wrote that out to make later. And when I started making movies, I hadn't made anything that was a monologue. So, you know, my favorite monologue, one of my favorites is Charlie Chaplin's The Dictator. Okay. I don't know if you've seen that. Years ago. I don't I have no idea. It's, I can't remember. There's anything a lot about of it. cuts of it on YouTube with like music from the Inception soundtrack. It's it's a really famous monologue. So I wanted to take a monologue and and make one, and I had already written one. So that's the story behind that. You wrote that while you were bored in a classroom. Yeah. Was it one of the BS classes down there in Oregon State? Um, U of O. In U of O. English. Okay. <laughs> and I'm afraid so. Yeah. Well, yeah, but something good came out of that class. That was really well done. Cool. Glad you liked it. All right, so th that's where you drew the inspiration for a funny thing. Uh, yeah, it's about childhood and growing up, and I wanted to dedicate it to uh, a hippie arts camp that was a big influence on my life, and specifically the creator of that camp. So Who would that be, if you don't mind? Her name's, her name's Althea, and I don't know if she's still with us today. but She must have had an influence on you. Well, yeah, her, her, her camp and her creation had an influence on me and gave me a lot of long-term friends, and this, that piece was for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were th who was the cinematographer for that? Um, that was a mixture of uh, my friend Dylan, myself, and my friend Henri. All right. And did you have any crew members or? Just us. Is that right? Good. Really, that was fun. Anyway, guess we're going to cut away now to the third one. This one's a little bit on the long side, but I like it. Uh, the special effects in it are amazing. And the name of it, it's a music video called Burning. And the uh, artist in it is Shake That, or that's who wrote it, right? Shake That? Yeah. Okay. And we'll be right back after watching Burning.
wow, the special effects in that were just phenomenal. I really liked that. Um, uh, so what was the premise for it? Um, the premise was I had heard one of his tracks and came up with this idea for a video and wanted to make the video and hadn't had a chance to really make a music video and in that kind of aesthetic and um, you know did a lot of research and a lot of visual effects tests and then we went out and shot it. All right. Cool. Uh, the special effects, did somebody else do those or did you do that? Yeah, those were hired out to Artifact uh, Studios and I only did one VFX shot in that video. Right, because some of them were great. I mean, the, gr the girl on fire. Yeah. Uh, here's a question I had. So when you went from the, the, the burning to underwater, mm -hmm. was there some kind of subconscious thing you wanted to get across from going to burning to underwater um, that uh, to was, be on fire to drowning or something like yeah, that? Yeah, the, the main trick with that was uh, me and the cinematographer actually had a much more elaborate plot for that video, which was about people going through uh, karmically tied together, and in every lifetime or incarnation, they are killing each other. But the artist um, was two people, and they couldn't get on the same page about that. So finally, I suggested the underwater aspect because that way you get the fire and water elements. You get the idea of the underwater with emotions because it's like a move. You know, it's really quite simple. It's just about you know, relationships. Um, you have the guy who's getting set on fire and the chick, so you could imagine that it's like her ex-boyfriend or something like that, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and okay. who hasn't had wanted at some it point worked. to I set mean, an ex on fire, you I know? I mean, there were some yeah. great locations. Was that shot in Portland? No, that was in Washougal, Washington. Okay, yeah, because it looked, it looked northwest, but I, uh, that's why I thought, you know, some of them looked like it might have been in Portland at places. Some, Portland some, area. a couple spots were in Portland, yeah, but um, the majority of it was in Washington and the Gorge. Right. Uh, who did you have crew on that? We did have a, a, a decent crew on that, and they worked really uh, tricky days. The person who had it w the worst was the actor because it was below freezing, and we kept dumping water on him. So yeah, yeah, he was he, he was uh, pretty grumpy. But now I just write parts for him and give him all the cushy roles. There you, know? you go. Yeah, yeah take dues. care of him now. Always, yeah. Yeah, tell him you're his biggest fan, right? <laughs> I I, tr I tell him constantly. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Who was the cinematographer? That was my buddy Nathan Coltrane. Who I I've heard his name lot. before. I've never met him though. He's a lovely guy. Yeah. What what camera did you use? On that one, we used a Sony FS seven hundred and a five D um, Harrison shot B cam on that. And um, yeah, we were really excited when we shot it because the Sony FS seven hundred had just come out, so it was like going to be one of the first slow mo videos. But well, it's got great imagery in it. It's pretty good. Um, I think the colorist on the video did a really good job, which is my buddy Martin Melnick, and he's a professional colorist, and I love working with him, and I look forward to working with him again. Good. What other screenplays have you written? Are you got any features written? Are you getting ready to do some features? Yeah. Um, Let's talk about those. Sure. What do you want to know? What features have you written? What are you getting to do? Um, Tell us. I co-wrote a feature script with a guy named Louis Garcia. I know it's Louis Garcia. who was the first guest on my show. Cool. Yeah. I co-wrote a feature with him. Called Eulogy for James, which was I know, I know he talked all about it, and he was on the show before. Great, cool. Um, I'm working on my own feature script right now. Um, got 60 pages on it. Probably I'll finish it up by December. I'm also I'm writing like two or two right now. Um, as I wrap up a couple of projects, I don't know much about the aspects of getting a feature made. I know it's very difficult. I know it takes a lot of people, and I know you need a lot of money and time. And so everything I've been doing has pretty much been practice for that's good. the feature game. Yeah. Well, that's what I was, one of my questions was, going, what are you know, some of the things you learned making all these other projects like Bacon and A Funny Thing and uh, Shake That that you think are going to help you in the future? Well, the primary, th primary thing is uh, film's kind of like a team sport. It's kind you of bet. like, that's how I see it. So you're trying to build your NBA squad or your NFL squad or however you want to phrase it. So you need someone good at every position and you need people who are willing to go, you know, a feature film is 20 to 40 plus days. I mean, it can even be <laughs> longer. And so you need people who are dedicated. Long and days and it can be some. Yeah, that's part of the nature of it making It is, you know, movie. I like it. I've done two eight-day shoots now on uh, two different projects that are consistent to one project. So that would be, you know, a fifth of the work it takes. So I know sure. it's a lot of work. I respect the amount of work it is. The most I've learned is about setups and scheduling and how to move quickly and, and how to shoot in a manner that's efficient. Good for you. Good for you. Uh, 
What do you, what do you feel is one of your strengths as, as a filmmaker? Um, I think that the ultimate strength is just to experience the film like your audience might experience it because in the end, you know, what you're capturing on that camera is an experience and it better be. in the case of the bacon video, what is the experience of making <laughs> this dish? What's it like? What well, are the it, tactile it sensations? It left me hungry after watching it. Yeah, that was hopefully by <laughs> design, you know, because it you know, sells more bacon that way. <laughs> but ultimately it's just like, you know, when sitting here at this table with you, all well, the first things that come to mind is the, the cloth, the proximity between us, the atmosphere and right. so these are the elements you you think about and in the end it really comes down to communication what are you trying to say uh, so what's your favorite part of filmmaking um, it's the approach to problem solving is that right yeah do you take care of having a, a shot list in advance and a lot of things planned out so that when the inevitable inevitable issues do come up you uh, it, it's easy to come up with an alternative. Yeah, on uh, really ambitious projects, I think it's good to have a game plan and, and to have t discussed it with everyone and, and have a map of how you're supposed to get there. And certain projects, it's better to kind of go in there and catch butterflies in a net the day of, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, okay. The bacon video, we, uh, the shot list was written the day of, for example. Okay, good, yeah. yeah. What's your least favorite thing about filmmaking? Um, as mentioned, it's a team sport, so my least favorite part is when the team isn't working properly and uh, not having enough money or time would be my least money favorite and, part. Money and time are two yeah. killers, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've mentioned some directors. Tell us who your favorite director is. I don't really have a favorite other than, I guess, you know, everyone can say Kubrick pretty confidently. He's really good, but I have a, I have a group. I could give you a group of directors. Give us a group of few people. Sure. I really like uh, Polanski, Spielberg, and Fincher. He just came others. out with Gone Girl. Yeah, it's I saw it. it was really no, nice. I just watched uh, Seven again the other day. Yeah. Phenomenal film. Yeah. All right. So, if what is your favorite film then? Um, I don't have a <laughs> favorite. I, I used to watch like five films over and over again when I couldn't sleep in high school. So. What were those? Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, uh, The Matrix, Reservoir Dogs, Dazed and Confused, and Empire Strikes Back. That's kind of an eclectic mix there. Well, so, American Beauty also, I guess. Yeah, well, six. you know, and here's the thing is, um, I could see those, when I see uh, uh, Shake That, I could see a little bit of those that genre coming out. Did, have those films affected uh, or, or inspired you on how you approach filmmaking? Uh, yeah, sure, of course. The um, you know, influence of each one is, is in every, every film, you can learn something from everything in your life. And... Those films specifically, I mean, Dazed and Confused, you've seen that, right? Yeah. Yeah, um, it's about a slice of life, and it's about a moment in time that is universal to anyone who's grown up in America, which is that, you know, going to college, high school phase, and so that's really interesting, and, and The Empire Strikes Back has these archetypes in it of the hero's journey, which... Yeah, archetypes are like the subconscious hot knife through butter for getting someone to understand what you're trying to say. Sure is. Works every time too. Yeah. If you could be the assistant director for an A-list director out of those, that group you named. Fincher. Really, Fincher. Yeah. Right off the top of that, that's good. Yeah. Is there a reason why? Um, I like the way his stuff looks and I like that he does a lot of takes and I exactly. learn a lot that's from what him. I, you know what, he's one of my favorites too. Mm -hmm. And it's because of the way he uses the camera. Mm -hmm. he's, he, he takes, if you watch some of these scenes, he's got the wide, a medium, a close-up, a close-up, and then he goes low, depending on the, the effect he wants to get from the actor, or he goes high to make them look smaller. He, he does a great job with that. Yeah. And you don't really know, if you're looking for it, you notice it. But if you're just watching the film, I usually have to watch a film twice so mm -hmm. I can watch the film and enjoy it, but then I analyze it. You know? <laughs> well, I try and learn from it, really. Yeah, of yeah. course. So, uh, what A-list actor and or actress would you like to work with? Uh, Rooney Mara. Never heard of her. She's, uh, she's been in a couple of Fincher's things. Okay, um, well, I'll just I'll have to look that up. Yeah, or Leo or Joaquin Phoenix, you know? Yeah, Joaquin Phoenix, yeah. He's, he's a very diverse individual. Yeah, I won't have much to say. I would mm -hmm. probably just, you know, watch him for a while. Thank you, Chris, for being here. Thanks uh, for having me. Yeah, I want to thank Ellery Nelson, He's my director, he does a great job, he sets everything up. I wanna thank my wife, Carol Poland, who's the assistant, uh, the executive producer. She's, she's a wonderful lady. 
Chris also, he's helped, sets up all the studio for me and gets everything done. Well, I thank Chris one more time for being here. And until next time, on Portland Film Beat, shoot for the silver screen.